attract to yourself that which you desire. What you desire desires you. Or what you want wants you. And it's really coming to understand that there is an energy that will bring things to you that will have things begin to show up and this is not to say that you just put out your manifestation desire and then just sit around and wait for some huge magnet in the sky to just uh, turn on and uh, be facing towards you and have everything just go Shh, there it is there's an element of uh, working with this divine universal force that is everywhere and a part of this divine essence. It is a divine creation. As you become more tuned into this divine consciousness, you begin to see that, uh, that there's really a spiritual solution to every problem in your life. That the things that don't seem to be working, the problems that you may have, whatever they are in relationships, in finances, in healing, and so on, that there is, yes, there is a solution in the physical plane that requires you to get up and do certain kinds of things and act in certain ways but in back of that action is a thought and the same force or the same power that moves waves to particles which is the act of creation also moves your pictures or your thoughts into the world of form the same intelligence, the same energy that moves a, a star across the sky moves a thought across your mind. This energy, this attractiveness, this attraction, this pull towards you and realignment of your intention with divine purpose is something that um, we can't measure in the physical world the way we would like to be able to measure the way we can measure ohms and uh, watts and so on when we're talking about electricity nevertheless it is exactly the very same power and the power that allows for anything to go from wave to particle also is behind your ability to think and therefore your ability to picture and your ability to decide what it is that you do desire. There is something inside of you that allows you to desire something. It isn't the desire I'm talking about. I'm talking about that which gives birth to it, that which allows it to be. The analogy here is when you begin to take care of your body in a certain way and to treat it well, to give it plenty of water, to avoid toxins, to give it the rest that it needs, to, to nourish it with the proper vitamins and minerals, to uh, give it the proper amount of exercise, to do the things that show that you are respectful of this garage that is housing your soul. It becomes automatic. It isn't any longer something that you have to struggle with, that you have to work on, and that you have to think about all the time. You go to automatic. It's a lot like writing also, and creating, and painting, and music. You know, when, when Picasso would, uh, was interviewed about his painting, and they asked him, how do you paint? He said, when I go into the studio, I leave my body and my mind at the door the way the Muslims leave their shoes before they enter the mosque. And I just allow my spirit into that world. The spirit, this soul, this force that I have talked so much about in this whole entire program, is really a power of love that you feel in your heart. It isn't something that you process with your mind. But when you understand it and know that it is an energy, that is working, that brings things into the world, into your world, realigns you, if you will, with what it is you'd like to create or have for yourself, you begin to cooperate. See, this divine intelligence will cooperate with you. But again, only if you feel that you're worthy and only if you know that 
you and it are connected. The minute you sense any sense of separation, it shuts off. The minute you place an obstacle there, it will shut off. I'll give an example of uh, how this energy works in overcoming some of the things that are struggles for most people in our lives. Most of us have addictions of one kind or another. Almost everyone suffers from some form of addiction. And when I say addiction, I'm talking about something that has, seems to have more power or control over us than we would like if things were to be perfect. So for some, it's sugar. For some, it's uh, alcohol. For some, it's drugs. For some, it's food. For some, it's approval. You know, needing to be a part of the tribe. What will they think? Remember, the mantra of the tribe. In terms of understanding this as a power and as an energy, I would like you to uh, think of back to the room that I talked about earlier. And your back is against the wall and everything to the right, even though we know that it's all one. Spirit, God is in everything. Okay? But for purposes of seeing it here, listening to it here, we go back to the room and... Everything on the right represents the physical world. Now, let's look at an addiction, something that owns us. There are three aspects to an addiction. It's going to be an addiction to money. It's going to be an addiction to power, also anything at all. For many in our culture, it is uh, to drugs and to alcohol, a problem that we are going to have to resolve, not with legislation, but with a, spirit, a new spiritual awareness. The only thing that ever has seemed to work for getting people off of addictions is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, which has as its base spirituality, God. Finding the solution to that which controls you in something other than that which is external to you. Finding it within yourself. And I speak from experience. Today I am a camel. A camel is an animal that starts his day out on his knees and it ends its day on its knees and it can go 24 hours without a drink. And there was a time when I didn't and I couldn't and I played around with substances and I played around with alcohol and I drank it every day, not enormous amounts, never in serious, serious trouble like DUIs and things like that, but just so that it was just a part of my daily life. And then I found by... My, as my life and my work moved more into a spiritual dimension, that it became less and less important to me. And I found that I was able to sort of notice it and observe it and no longer be attached to it. So that if you look at an addiction from everything to the right-hand side of your room in the physical plane, there are three aspects of it, all of which are in the physical domain. There is the craving... There is the craver, and there is that which is craved. And all of those are on the right-hand side of the room. The craver is the person, the body. The craving is the thought, the image. I want that, I need that, I must have that. It's different from the craver. And that which is craved, which is external to me. The cocaine, the marijuana, the drugs, the sugar, the hot fudge sundae, the whatever it is. And it's all in the physical domain. And as long as you stay here in the physical domain and try to deal with it and get rid of it in your life, you are still trapped because you haven't gone to your source. The source is the way you transcend the duality of the physical plane. And so when you go to your source and go to the left-hand side of the room, and become your source and now become the witness and observe that and just notice it and just put your attention on it and just watch it with love, which I'll be talking about in the next principle, and just observe it from a perspective of I am connected to that, it is me, I have become it, and I can also transcend it and go beyond it by just putting my attention on a new aspect of myself, which is pure. And so from the position of the source, or the sorcerer, you just watch it.
then it's not you. You're free from it. You are just noticing. Oh, there goes Wayne again. He's going to have another beer. And he thinks he really must have this and all. But from the perspective of the witness, of the observer over here, you are pure love. Because that's what God is. That's what the higher part of you is. Just pure, unconditional love. And you direct that energy to that aspect of you which has allowed itself to be addicted. And it disappears. When I left those things behind many, many years ago in my life, it was as a result of saying and hearing a voice. And the voice said, You've tried everything else. Now try me. And when I went there, when I went there and truly went there and then began my manifestation meditation on that, it was gone. And now today, I can look at those things that I used to crave, those cravings. I can look at the craver and all that is craved and I can laugh at it.